go into today's learning plan and at the bottom of today's learning plan we have a few things um, we have bear files please click on that and download the bear files and huh yes clearly <laughs> and then um, just note that there's more there's lazy bear for homework if you want to grab that right now and download it go ahead and do that as well hit refresh it's there Yep. And then lazy bear for homework is a different bear. For crying out loud, download. Bear associate Excel. Lazy bear downloads. So there's two different things. One is for what we're going to do in class right now, and the other one is for some homework. So bear files is what you need for class. It's a zip file. So if you open the zip file and unzip it, you'll see that we have two different images, bear stream and bear JPEG. All right, let's pop back into Photoshop. And if you need to close out everything in here, please do. Okay, in Photoshop, we are going to open those two files that we just downloaded. So in the bear zip file we have bear and bear stream if you shift click and then hit return it'll open both of those um, as two separate tabs so we have bear on some grass and mud and then we have a stream with some rocks <clears throat> we're going to take the bear image and we're going to drag and drop it into our other one and as we let go, we're going to hold down the shift key and all that's going to do is stack it perfectly on top of the other one because they're the same size. So take this bear file and with your move tool, move it into bear stream and then hold shift before you let go. And that will stack it directly on top. So I have two layers. I have layer one is the bear. And if I turn off that visibility, it's stacked on top of the river. <clears throat> All right, then let's save this new document, do a file save as, and call it your name, and then bear stream. Okay, so our goal is to make a composite of this bear standing in this stream. So on the bear layer, the bear layer, we need to select the bear and then we're going to mask out everything else. And we're going to do just an average job of masking first. So anybody have any guesses what tool could be our quick best friend? Selection. Quick selection tool, yes. So take the quick selection tool and as you drive your cursor around, it's adding to the selection. So select the bear and his legs. And then what you don't want in the selection is the green space between his legs. So you might need to make your cursor a little bit smaller and hold the option key and try to get out that green area, a little bit of it anyway, between his legs. So the size of your cursor as you're making the selection. And then option to take away from the selection if it got to be too much. Don't worry about getting this perfect at all, but you can see in general, I have these green spaces, these big ones between him that are not selected. So using the quick selection tool, just get a decent rough outline around our bear. And once you have that selection, we're going to go to our layers panel and we're gonna click on the add layer mask button, which is the rectangle with the black circle inside of it, the add a layer mask. And when you click on that, it masks out everything but your selection. So we can see that we have black and that's hiding the layer parts of that layer. So all the green grass and the mud are hidden and white shows. We can see the bear. And obviously this is not a great selection. We can see sprigs of grass and it's kind of got a weird outline to it, but it's a good start. It's a good quick start. 
You can definitely see some areas that need attention. Um, and if you ever want to see it without the mask or just temporarily um, turn the mask off, hold down um, the shift key and that and click on the mask layer itself and that temporarily um, will turn it off. <laughs> so shift and clicking on the mask turns it on and off. So if you look at the bear's back foot, it's not really um, dug out. It's the fact that this green um, piece of pine tree is in front of it. But when we look at it this way, it kind of looks dug out. So in the real world, when you're fixing this, you'd want to add his leg back in there. And then where you see pieces of grass, obviously you need to fix that up. All right. We are going to clean up this mask a little bit. <clears throat> so another way of looking at your mask, if you want to see what it looks like, is hold Command. I'm sorry, not Command. That loads your selection. When I Command clicked on the mask layer, notice I have the marching ants. That's not what I wanted. So I'm going to Command D to deselect. Option clicking on the mask layer shows us our mask very dramatically. So we have white shows black hides. And you can see it's kind of, um, it's bumpy, which is good. It's showing some texture, so that's what we want. But we want to clean up this mask. So option, click on the thumbnail, returns us to our normal view. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that we're in our default colors. So the letter D will switch your foreground color to black and white. And then if they're stacked wrong, if you're painting with white and you wanted to paint with black, the letter X key switches those two, and that will always work. So if you have pink and yellow as your foreground and background, and you push X, it'll flip them so that yellow's on top, pink is on the bottom. So with your finger on the X key, you can quickly switch back and forth from painting with white or black. <clears throat> All right, so we need to clean this up a little bit. We can go down and look at the bear's feet, and we can see some areas where I should have better masking. So make sure that you're on the masking layer, that you have the white little box around the masking layer, and we're gonna paint with black where we wanna hide something. So get your paintbrush, and you can make it a soft edge or a hard edge. Probably want a pretty hard edge this time, and then make it smaller. In my case, I need it to be smaller. And we're just going to paint in here with our black to get rid of some of this grass that's showing through. So go around and kind of clean up in areas where you really see problems. And then use other tools that we've used so far, like the um, healing brushes or the clone stamp tool. And that will get you... Um, to fix areas like where there's grass here and we don't want grass to be showing. So the clone stamp tool, I'm gonna to get rid of some of this grass. Whoops. Um, what I just did was I was trying to use the clone stamp tool and I forgot that I was on the layer of the mask itself, not the layer of the actual bear. So when you're gonna go and clone, and paint um, bare hair over top of this green grass. Make sure that you're working on the photo layer, not the mask layer. So clean this up as best you can. All right, what is wrong here? Flow, Something strange is going on in my computer. Okay, so work around and just get the obvious parts 
um, where you see grass. It doesn't have to be perfect because the main lesson here is actually something else. And then when it's the mask that you want to work with, make sure that you have the mask selected and that you're painting with black and white as needed to get rid of um, the masking. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to pretend that that's cleaned up, and I want to show you some issues that we have with this image. Um, I want you to look at <clears throat> look at the top of the bear's back, and in the version that we have masked out, it kind of looks like he has wet hair that's kind of matted down, or at least on mine it does up here. If I turn off this mask temporarily, what I actually see is that I've masked out even more of his hair and that if you zoom in, you see how a lot of these hairs are really spiky and pointy. Like zoom in on the bear's hair on its original background and you see it, all of the spiky hair. So if you wanted to composite this on a background that has kind of a green tint to it, you wouldn't have to be perfect. It could kind of, the selection we made so far could kind of work. But we're trying to put it on a background that's different and by doing that, especially here, we have white background. So if we left all those spiky pieces showing and the green behind it, it would look really fake. Now, are you guys going to go and mask out between every spike? Do you want to? <laughs> no. If you had to, there's a better way of doing it. So we're going to learn how to add some of those spiky hairs back in without actually taking our selection and going around and masking around every single spike, which would take forever in a day. All right, <clears throat> we are going to create a custom brush and it's going to be in the shape of a hair. So, um, ba -bum -bum -bum. all right, we've already looked at our hair. If you forgot what it looks like, Shift click on the mask to turn it off momentarily and see all these spiky hairs. That's what we're going for. So we're going to make a new layer to build a custom brush. <clears throat> and we're going to make a new layer, click on the new layer button, and then rename that hair test, just so we know what we're working on. <clears throat> and then we want to fill this layer with white. So we can go to edit fill and we can see that we have content aware or we have foreground color, background color, white. Our background color is white so you can choose it there and say okay. That filled that whole layer with white. <clears throat> the other thing that you can do is <clears throat> option delete fills with your foreground color command delete fills with your background color. So keyboard shortcuts to do that same thing, but we want to fill this whole layer with white. <clears throat> All right, next thing we're going to do is take our brush. Make sure that your foreground color is black because we're going to be painting with black. Take the brush tool and go up to your um, brush picker and we're going to make a 10 pixel hard black um, 100% hard <clears throat> option. And if your rulers are on, I want you to be able to see over to the side of your rulers. I'm really zoomed in, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. <clears throat> We're going to make a line, a straight line with this black brush that's about a quarter of an inch long anywhere on here. It absolutely doesn't matter, but it's about a quarter of an inch long and hold shift to keep it straight and just draw a quarter of an inch long line. If you see your rulers at the side here, you can see I went down about a quarter of an inch. So it's pretty small. <clears throat> then you're gonna wanna zoom in on it and you're gonna wanna be able to see the top of this. So this is what I got when I drew it originally. Now we're gonna switch our color so that white is on the top. So either click on this double arrow to switch foreground and background or X is the keyboard shortcut that switches those. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna paint with our paintbrush with white 
and we're going to paint white to kind of shave this down and make it a spiky thing. So kind of shave off the edges by painting with white to create a spiky piece of hair, basically, is what we're doing. <clears throat> so this is going to be the basis for our brush, our custom brush that we're making. To make a custom brush, you have to do two things. It has to be black on a white background. So that's why we made this whole new layer called Hair Test. Yep. About a quarter of an inch long, or the brush itself. 10 pixel, um, hard, so it has hard edges, not feathered edges. It looks kind of feathered or soft only because we're zoomed in so much, but it is a hard edge brush. <clears throat> so to make a custom brush, it has to be a white background with black design. Whatever the design is, that's going to be your custom brush. So take your rectangular marquee tool and draw a marquee. Come on. Some days are just better than others. Rectangular marquee. There we go. Draw a rectangular marquee around that hairbrush that you just made. <clears throat> and then go into your edit drop down menu. And about three fourths of the way down or two thirds of the way down, we see define brush preset. Click on that. And it's going to show you a preview of the brush and it's going to say, what do you want to name it? We're going to name this one Bear Hair. And then hit enter. <clears throat> Go up to window and turn on your brushes window so that we can see it. <clears throat> And if you have this view that pops up first, like I do, um, to the right you see a little folder with a brush on it. If this is the view that you guys are seeing, click on that. If this is the view that you see or in brush settings, this is the one that we want to work with. So here's the one that I just created. And if I hover mm -hmm. over it, it says bare hair. I see a little preview of it, but you see there's a million other brushes here that we can use. And with each one of them, we also have settings. So you have to think of this as this is the brush at the end of the tip of your cursor or at the end of the tip of your pen, if you will, and how you hold the angle of the pen makes the brush appear differently or which direction the hair is pointing. So as we paint with it, we don't always want it pointing up and down. Sometimes we want it painting left to right or right to left. So we're going to change that using this custom brush. All right. <clears throat> Um, in this um, brush settings with our hairbrush, our bare hair selected, we're going to go down to the spacing. And right now, depending on what it is, just start pulling that cursor or that slider out. And notice as we get to higher percentages, we start to see space between the bare hairs. We're going to pull that out to about 170%. So now we see that as we would paint with this, it would put that much space between the different parts of our brush. The size of our brush, um, right now, the, I happen to build mine at 86 pixels, but we're going to change the size of it down to 26. So right up here in the size, change that to 26. <clears throat> Shape dynamics. Over here on the left-hand side, we see some boxes. This is a lot like we did with type last week, where as we check them, they're being applied. So turn on or click the shape dynamics box. <clears throat> and when you do that and select it so that it's highlighted, once it's highlighted, we see different options here. We see jitter, angle, and roundness. Um, we're going to leave them at the default values, but I want you to pull around with this and see how your preview changes. So angle jitter, instead of everyone going up and down, if you do it that way, it almost looks like barbed wire or something. It's very randomized. Um, roundness jitter makes it softer, not those spiky ends. And then the size jitter, as we get dramatic, do you see how it changes the size? Not every one is 26 pixels tall. Some of them are smaller. 
So that randomizes the size. Whereas if we leave it at zero, they're all gonna be the same size. <clears throat> all right, scattering, if we click on that checkbox and highlight that also, we can change the scatter. So if you pull on your mm -hmm. slider, you see how it behaves. At zero, all of the bases are anchored, but as we pull to the right, they start scattering from that baseline. That's not gonna be a good look on our bear, so we're gonna leave that one at zero also. Um, cool thing is you can kind of pull these around and see how they react, but know that there's all these different things within the brushes. If you click the check mark to activate it, it's active, and then if you highlight it, you get your options for it to the right. <clears throat> All right, when we're happy with this brush that we made, and we are now, we are done with, um, actually, hold on one second before I say that. In your brush panel, go up to this, um, to the right-hand corner where you have the three lines, and we're going to do a new brush preset from here. And the name of it is Bear Hair 1. We're going to change that to be Bear Hair Scatter. So we tweaked it to have that spacing of 170% so that it's spaced out. And now we changed our brush preset to reflect that. So we say OK. <clears throat> And now let's just test it. Um, deselect, if you have marching ants going around your original piece that you did. Now with your brush set to the bare hair preset, um, make sure that your foreground color is black and paint around and you'll see how this is gonna behave now. So that's using that bare hair that we just did and making some spikes. Everybody good with that? I meant to um, photocopy this section of the book and have it available for you, so I will do that. I'll just do a photocopy of these six pages, and I'll have it as a PDF on Blackboard that you guys can reference or print out or use. Um, everything we've done so far, up until this making a custom brush we've done before, but making a custom brush is something new. Um, let me show you another cool thing while we're here that you can do with a custom brush. Um, Let's take um, the type tool. I'm going to um, step back so I have more white space here. Let's take the type tool and type out your name in a size that is manageable. I don't know. I got to zoom out here. This might be perfectly fine. This is my name at 100 point type. That's pretty big. I'm going to make it smaller. And I'm going to change to a font that's kind of fun. So I'll pick a font. That's not a fun font. That's a stupid font, but it's good for my demonstration. <laughs> um, from here, because it's black on a white background, we can do the same process. We can take the rectangular marquee and select it. And then we can say Edit, Define Brush Preset. And I'm going to call this the Brenda brush and say OK. And here's what the Brenda brush looks like when you smear around and paint with it. But look how it looks when you simply click once with it. Come on. Why are you not working now? Hair test in this one, brush, black. If you go into your brush tip shape, this is where you see all of them. Here's the Brenda brush. Why is it not working? I tell you, this is when I go crazy. Oh, thank you, because I'm still, hey, you guys, see? Click once, <laughs> and it puts down whatever's in your brush. So those of you that take pictures and you want to do a watermark of your name or your custom logo, this is a brush. 
This is now 100% scalable. So if I wanted this to be a bigger brush, I would use my bracket keys. And I click once, and it's like that. Or I take the opacity down, and I make the opacity of this layer. Whoops. I got to have my glasses on. I can't see what I'm doing. Because this has a white background, it's showing the white background also. But I could go to the layer of the um, of the bear. I could switch my foreground color to be white, and I can click once with this. And on and also remember, this is a mask layer. That's why only half of my name is showing up. But you can stamp on anything. So if you have a logo for your business or your photography, and you want to put this watermark on it, if you want to make a shape of a panda bear and turn it into a custom brush and every time you click once with that you have the shape of your panda bear right there you can do that that's how custom brushes work all right now that i've made a sufficient mess we can actually go to the hair test layer and dump it we're done the only reason we had that layer white with black was to make that custom brush and we have that custom brush back here in our brush um, tip shape, if you click on this top one, if you're in the dynamics or scattering or anything like that, you're not going to see your brushes. You have to click on this top brush tip shape and then make sure that you go and activate that bare hair that we just made. Okay, <clears throat> so we now have some bare hair brush sizes that we're going to use on our mask. So make sure that in your layers panel you have the mask layer itself highlighted, the black and white one. <clears throat> and we're going to click on the thumbnail mask to activate it, and we're going to choose white as our foreground color. So if black is on top, push X. So what we want to do is we want to add some masking to this. And I'm going to zoom in to the top of the bear's back. And on my masking layer, this is too big. I'm going to make it smaller. So 40 pixels. Now I'm down to 25 pixels. As we hold down and paint across here, we are painting with bare hairs and there should be that scatter. Maybe I need to use that one. Yep, I need to use that one. So if you have two of these, if you hover over them, this first one is bare hair, that's the normal version. The one you wanna select is the bare hair scatter. And that's gonna put that spacing. So do you see as I'm painting around, my brush is going straight up and down, but I'm painting on the mask with this. So if I look at my mask, that's what my mask actually looks like. I painted white spikes on the bear. And there is hair behind it that's the bear hair, but sometimes there isn't. There's green grass behind it, so maybe when I look at it, I'm going to get a spike of green grass. We'll deal with that in a second. But you're going to go around and paint on this, and then you're going to change your angle by spinning this dial. So when you want your hair to go at a different direction, spin it, and now my hair is going at that direction. When I get over to this side of the bear, I want my hair going too far. That would be okay for over here. So in a perfect world, you would go around the bear. And you would add the spikes where you want them on your mask. So again, we're just masking. We're adding the white mask to this. Okay, I'm just going to do this top part of the bear and a couple of sides to kind of show you how this works. So you keep turning the angle of your scatter bear hair. to get this to mask out the way you want it to. Okay, so that's, we're calling that good enough. <clears throat> okay, so this is pretty spiky. This is our layer mask that we're working with right now. And it's definitely got hard edges from white to black, which is sort of what we want, but we want it a little bit lighter. So with our mask still selected down here, we're gonna blur this a little bit. So we're gonna go up to filter, and then down to blur, and we're gonna choose Gaussian blur, and it's gonna give us an amount of blur. Now you can see in the preview how it softened this, 
that's a blur of one pixel radius. If we go up to a 94 pixel radius blur, it's horrific. It just blobbed out the bear. We're going to take a radius of two pixels, 2.0. And that's going to give us a little bit of a lighter edge up here on our, um, on our actual mask. That's actually too blurry in my opinion. I'd back it off a little bit, somewhere between one and two, and then say, okay. All right, doing okay? Let's, um, in the brush window that I just closed, when you have it selected, it's this circle thing right here. You pull that around at different angles and it changes the direction of your the brush that you made. So the spikes go in different directions. So how'd you get that brush window? How'd I get what? Brush window. Um, window brushes, yeah. and then click on brush tip preset, and that folder with the brushes. All right, I'm going to go back and show you what this looks like now. So, do you see some of these little spikes that we made in here? It looks pretty good, but there's still a lot of green. And I didn't do all around his hair over here, but there's a lot of green um, color casts that we want to get rid of that was caused from the grass and the pine needles in that original <laughs> picture. <clears throat> um, it's almost impossible to eliminate them, right? We see some green hues right up here and the spiky hair that we just added. That's gonna be really hard to totally eliminate. Um, <clears throat> the easiest solution that we have for this is to convert them to a foreground color that kind of matches the bear. So instead of these pixels being this greenish tint, we're gonna have them kind of match the brown of the bear. All right. We're going to add a new layer above our bear. So add a brand new layer, and we're going to call this one Fringe Pixels. So it's an empty layer called Fringe Pixels. The color mode of this new empty layer that we're working on, we need to change from normal to the color blending mode, which we've just used earlier today. So it takes the luminosity, the brightness of the pixels behind it, but it's going to apply a color to it. So instead of having greenish color casts here, it's going to have whatever color we tell it to be, which is going to be brown. <clears throat> this adjustment that we're going to do, we want only affecting the bare layer below it. So we're going to clip this adjustment or this layer to the one below it. So hold Option. Hover between those two layers, fringe pixels and the bear, and when you see the down arrow and the box, click, and that's going to clip that just to the layer below it. So it's only going to be, whatever we do to this layer is going to be constrained to be with inside this mask below it, the white area. If we were to color outside here in the background, where it's masked, nothing will happen. Only the things that we do inside of the white part of the mask are gonna be affected. All right. <clears throat> um, take your brush tool. We're gonna to hold down Option to get our sampler, eye sampler, and we're gonna sample a color of brown in the bear. It doesn't matter which one you do, just grab a color of brown Notice that changed our foreground color to brown. And now we're going to paint over these fringe pixels. And it doesn't matter how good we are or how detailed we are because it's being limited to the white part within the mask only. But notice up here at the top of his back, some of my fringe pixels had a green tint to them. They don't anymore. I'm painting over them with a brown color blending mode overlay. So anything that had a green tint, I'm now painting brown. So this is not masked out well, but you can see wherever there's a green tint, if I'm painting with it, it's turning into a brown tint, okay? And it's staying within the boundaries of the mask. So we now have some spiky hair up here on the bear that looks brown and looks a lot more realistic. <clears throat> All right, if this looks too fake, the other cool thing about this fringe pixel layer that we created is that we can back off the opacity of it. So right now we're at 100%, but maybe we could pull that down a little bit. 
and maybe make it look a little bit more realistic. It's not quite as dramatic. So again, this fringe pixel layer, we can tweak it with the opacity. Then let's just look at our whole picture and let's assume that we did a good job all the way around the bear. There's no green showing through. We added spiky hair wherever we needed it. What about this image makes it still look fake? Lighting. Yeah, the lighting specifically what? Like what's missing? Shadow. <laughs> shadow. He's like floating on water, <clears throat> right? He's walking on water and there's no shadow or evidence that, you know, it just looks fake. It looks totally composited. So often another step to make your composites look realistic is to think about the lighting and where there would maybe be some shadows. Um, <clears throat> all right, we're going to create a new layer below our bear. So go to the background layer and then click on new layer. That'll put one. No, I did not say delete. I said new. Goodness. That's going to create a new layer underneath our bear layer. And let's call that one shadow. And what we're going to do is, this is pretty easy, we're going to take our brush tool, but we're not going to use the hairbrush, the bare hairbrush. We are going to use a normal brush, a soft round brush that's quite big and that has 100% or zero hardness, so it's very soft. And then we're going to change our foreground color to be black. And in theory, we could paint. I want to show you how it looks poorly. We're going to paint underneath the bear with black. Ooh, there's a shadow. That looks great, doesn't it? What do you guys think? <laughs> Good enough, right? Not so much. Looks pretty fake. So a couple of things that we could do. This layer that we just painted in is at normal blending mode and 100% opacity. So we can play with those two things to make it look more realistic. We can change the blend mode. And if we don't know, the cool thing is we now get a preview. We can just kind of rotate through these until we find one that looks okay. Soft light isn't bad. Um, in the book, they say multiply. I don't know about that. But if we did that, we would then back off the opacity heavily. And again, how big you painted that shadow area, no, maybe you redo it and it's not quite as big. But you have to do something to make it look natural, okay? You have to change blend modes and or opacity. But by doing this, we took a bear and it looks fairly realistic, especially if we'd done a good job of cleaning up all around him. In the areas of the top of the back where it was way impossible to get masking around there, we created our own brush. And then we painted that brush into the mask itself. We made the mask jut out with spiky hair. That's what we were doing on that. And then the fringe pixels, we painted with that color opac or the color blending mode in brown to kind of make them have a brown look versus having um, the green tint from the original picture. So again, there's our mask, which from a distance doesn't look like much. But when we zoom in, we see that's the hair that we put in. Okay, so that is another specialty mode of masking that I wanted to share with you. Whether it turned out perfectly or not, don't worry. I wanted you to get the idea. And like I said, I am going to copy and get these directions up in Blackboard so you can refer to them. Um, your in-class homework that I want you to work on before you leave is Lazy Bear. And if you already downloaded Lazy Bear, you'll see that this is what he looks like. I'm just going to open because I already downloaded that. Um, here's Lazy Bear. So when we look at him, he's got a few spikes, not a lot. He's kind of got a fuzzy edge. You might need to add a few spikes to him to make him look realistic. But what you're going to do is you're going to find the background of your choice off the internet. And you are going to make a composite of Lazy Bear in this new scene. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to mask him out where needed. You're going to tweak the mask a little bit. Maybe do those fringe pixels again where you paint brown over them so that if there is any color cast, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But then you're also going to think about lighting. Like where's the lighting source on him? Where's the sun coming from? Anyone? <laughs> behind him, right? He's lit up from behind. So in the real world, his shadow would fall you know, in front of him. So when you put him in a new background, do that shadow idea too. 
have fun with this. I've seen this dude sitting at the Taj Mahal. I've seen him sitting on a toilet. Um, funny things. <laughs> Just kind of have fun with it, but really practice your masking techniques and the idea of changing blend modes and shadows to get it to look natural. Okay. I will have, there's a drop box for him. This is due by the end of class. You have to do this before you leave. Now, I need to pause. This is your lazy bear homework. <laughs>